Hey guys, how are you tonight? I'm trying to find you on my phone so I can see who I'm talking to. Hmm, why am I not coming up? Am I in the right group? Oh. Cancel. Hold on. Let me find you guys. There we are. Okay, good evening. Sorry for the delay. I forgot to oops, let me put that down. Hold on a second. Something's trying to eat my foot down there. I forgot to put my timer up, so I decided to jump in just a couple minutes early. <laughs> just to say hello. See how everybody's doing. And um, move that out of my way. See how everybody's doing and see what you've been up to. We've been rocking and a rolling with tornadoes around here. What is you guys? What is your weather like? Let me pull up my chat window. See what's going on. Hey, Cindy, you made it. Hi, Misty. Um, yeah, Cindy, did you, um, did many of those tornadoes hit over by you? Man, they were popping right and left over here. The one that hit Decatur, you know, is we were right in that path and the Azel, all of those. And they just kind of went like either just like we're here. They just went above us or below us. And um, hi, Peggy. My daughter was headed to the airport. And... As she was going, the two went across Grapevine, went across the highway. She went on just about 10 minutes later and, you know, dodging the debris. So, hey, Charlotte. Um, hi, Amy. Who else do we have on here? Anyway, so, yeah, I was sound asleep. My daughter called me 6 o'clock in the morning. And I knew something was wrong. I'm like, Kristen, what's wrong? She goes, Mom, we got tornado warnings. Turn your TV on and see where they're at. Yeah, they were coming right at us. But luckily, we dodged them all. Um, didn't look like there were any deaths in Texas over these that I saw. Hey, Leslie. So, um, again, I forgot to turn my, my five-minute timer on. So I decided to jump in here just a little bit um, early. Yeah, it's, it's late in the season, right, Cindy, for these tornadoes to be hitting like this. But I'm glad you guys were lucky and they didn't come your way. Um, it is sure never fun. Hello, Misty. Hello, Jody. Um, Charlotte, are you in Louisiana? I heard there were some nasty tornadoes in Louisiana. Hello again from Sweden and Therese. Uh, a lot of snow. Ooh, I, I'm not a fan of the cold. I am not a fan of the cold. And there's Miss Rachel. Hey, sweetie. All right. So it is five o'clock somewhere. Hey, Leslie, where are you? Oh, we are in Texas. Um, in northern Texas. Uh, Fort Worth area. Yeah, you are. Okay, Charlotte. Yeah, I did see those hit um, Louisiana. Hey, Deb Gardner, Rhonda Carr, Jessica Glenn. Um, I see you guys all jumping on. Negative 27. Holy cow. Um, yes, we are all, we are all okay. The tornadoes. Though several were coming right at us, they ended up going north um, or northwest. Um, in fact, barely missing my daughter and her husband's business um, on its way to Decatur. But um, hey, from North Carolina, Kathy, it's three o'clock there. You three, four, five. Are you in the like California area, Kathy? Yeah, that would be about three o'clock. Okay. We, it is 5.02 and we are going to get started. So, tonight 
I have shown this to my slab group, but I'm going to show you guys tonight are, and did I put them away? I did not. I'm going to show you our newest hybrid forms, Washington State. Well, I figured you were over there on, well, wait a second. Yes, Washington State. I figured you were over there on that West Coast. Um, these are rounded on the bottom that you've all been asking for. Um, and these are only a 22 degree angle instead of that big wide angle of the forms. And it's not straight like our dual drapes. And it creates, I'm gonna show you the side of this. It creates a very tall, gorgeous, I got a braided foot, side on these. And on the inside, it's rounded bottom and the sides are slightly rounded. So if you put texture in there, there's no pokey lines cutting into your texture anywhere. And these new hybrid forms stand up nice and perky. Oh, I just, they're the bomb. I absolutely just love them. Um, <laughs> Woo -hoo! Whoa! Okay, so this is what y'all have been asking for. Um, and now we have delivered. Um, Mr. Wilson is working on another shape that you all have been asking for. And I'm not even going to tell you what it is yet. Um, because it is mm, unbelievable. Unbelievable. You're going to absolutely love it. Perky is always good. Yep. Yeah, probably shouldn't use that word. Um, so let's do this. Let's, uh, if you're in my slab group, you, this, what I'm going to make is going to be a repeat, but what I'm going to make it with is brand new. Um, at the end of this, I want to do a this or that because I created something that you guys have been on me for a long, long time to create. And I created two, look at my, my hands from doing rolling pins, um, permanently yellowed. Anyway, I created two designs because I couldn't figure out which one I love best. Um, one's very busy and one's a little more scattered. That's the word I should have used, scattered. Um, so I want you to see, now if you're a flower painter, you might like the scattered design. If you are, um, if you are just making pots, then you might want the busy design. So um, I want to know, how does one get into your slab group? Um, Leslie, that's a paid membership group. If you go to my website on the home page, scroll down just a little bit, you'll see um, information about that. You can click on it. It will take you um, over to information on it from there. Um, and we'd love to have you join us. Um, hey, Renee. Looking at the pins on the floor. Can you see the pins on? You're cheating, Deb. Okay, I'm going to show you then. I didn't know those were showing. Okay. So, they're very close. Um, okay, I'll do it this way. See how this one it's farther and it's hard to tell on the pin, but I've rolled it out in one of the module in one of the uh videos and I'll show it to you. And this one is very, very busy. Um I, I you know, I like busy, but if you want to individual paint flowers, you might like the more scattered look. So I will I will show you. Let's just do that. Hey, let's look at the this or that video before we even get started with anything else. Okay, I did send out a couple of, hey, do you, this or that, that, do you like this or do you like that? This is the cone flower design, this way, that we used on the pot today. However, I have a second one. They're very, very similar 
only this one is a lot more widespread. So I'm going to roll them both into clay so we can do this or that. This is not the one we use today. So let me roll this one. Okay, those of you that want a little less, now remember, I didn't do the tips of these because you can. However, however you want to. So let me put this one right here. Let me roll this other one. Okay, this is the one we use today. And then we'll put them side by side and play this or that. Which do you like better? Roll this one. Doesn't take much pressure. I just try to stay out of the camera. And uh, that doesn't usually work. Okay. Now. Let's put these both right side up. What's that on there? There's, the, the, like I said, same flowers, just different pattern, just different design. Um, I don't know. Here, let me bring this down some. Hold on. See all my mess over here. Move that one. Okay, can you maybe see these this way? Maybe if I go like this. Okay, one is busier than the other. So let's go like this. You don't need my face in there. There is, um, there's that one. This we're going to call A. The more busy one we're going to call A. And then, oops, where are you? And then the more spread out one we're going to call B. Do you like B? Or A? See if I can get them kind of in the same frame now. Sorry guys, <laughs> this is, there we go. There. A, A, or B? A, or B? Let's talk about it. Okay, there you have it. So, funny enough, I'm getting B, 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 but I did send this out to several people um, and family members this morning, and it was a, like a one for one, A, B, A, B, A, B. Um, so I was like, oh, now what do I do? So I made them both B, although I'd use both only if one, it's B. Okay, gotcha. So... What I did was I went ahead and made them both and um, decided, and, and seeing it in the clay does make it a little bit different. So let me show you both. Um, okay, so both. So y'all, that's not helpful because if I have to decide between A and B, um, both. It's a hard choice. Okay, let me take your mind off of that for a second. Okay, I'm going to give you guys a little sample peek. This is Coney Tiles. And let me show you what this baby's going to look like on here. I think I'm doing it upside down, but that's okay. I'm going to stand up here.
look at this. Would that not be absolutely gorgeous? I'm going to have to set that aside and make something with that. This is old clay. Okay. And because I was doing coney flowers, I decided to go in a more whimsical way and see if that worked. And that, that is how that looks. So this would be C, A, B, or C. Now I gave you a third choice. Sometimes you get on a roll and things happen and sometimes you can't make anything. So A, B, or C. And I should have laid this clay diagonally across this farmhouse template. Okay, so with that, let me go. Let me actually go and you've just seen me um, roll it out on clay. So I'm not going to show you the first video of prepping the clay tonight. I'm going to go right to making this dish with that design. Woohoo! Look at that. Do you see in the bottom and in the octagon, octagon edges here, nothing is cracking into my texture. Um, you've got a definite octagon, but again, these are rounded. This is rounded. So you get a beautiful rounded octagon. I'm trying to get it where that light isn't in it. Rounded octagon, but not one sharp line in your texture. So let's go to just making this dish. Okay. Now, I have my banding wheel, and I have my banding wheel system. Somebody asked me about what was on the back of this. This was simply um, Mr. Wilson had a little Lazy Susan thing that he screwed on the back uh, for just when I use this one. Um, so this doesn't come on your banding wheel system. Now, I just had my little peg. Let me find what I did with it. You know, when you're trying to run your machine, get ready for lives and everything else. So this is simply a lip template that gives me that perfect little edge and uh, is the exact shape of my form. Now, I could also, let me see if this one would happen to fit it. I could also use any rim template and get a beautiful, beautiful edge on there. But I'm just going to use the lip template tonight. And this is our new hybrid forms with the nice rounded bottoms and edges. Of course, our signature rolling pin. And um, maybe if we have time later, I'll show you the one I'm testing. That goes in the hole. This goes in the hole. There we go. Just like that. Now, I have my clay back here because I like to get my clay and drape it over where I can see where I'm going with it. So I'm going to do that. Get this cord out of my way. I'm going to drape this over. Then I'll scoot this back into the camera for you. So here I come with my clay. Oops, because sometimes I see that, oh, maybe I didn't go far enough over and go like that. All right, now I'm gonna take a bunch of this excess off real quick just to get it out of my way so I can work with this better. That makes it a little easier. Now I'm going to scoot this 
Now, when I have wrinkles, like right here, I take and I lift it up and press it down at the wrinkle. And that, do you see how quickly that, just that one little lift got rid of my wrinkles? Now this is that T-Mix clay that I just totally struggle with. This clay just cracks itself up. These are just little surface cracks. It doesn't hurt anything and it's not cracking on the top um, due to our nice, beautiful, rounded top. So I take my red rib first and go right around the top here. Clean that off. Now, again, because we're rounded, you're not gonna you're not gonna crack this if you bring it down, but you can go either way. You can see this octagon. You can come up like this onto the shape to start with. Get yourself going. Get your shape in there. Or you can come down. Or you could go up and then down. Whatever works for you. I'm going to go around this. And I'm not going too hard. I, this is super wet clay and I do have texture on this. Okay, so I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to come around here and just kind of get these little crummy things down. And again, I'm not pressing really hard because of that texture. I'm just going around. And now I'm going to take my red rib and I'm going to just take my, I'm going to take my bigger end and just come around the bottom here just to make sure it's around that template. I have a little thingy right there and I just ran over it with my red rib and uh, it went completely away. Okay, now I do want to go across the top here and I just spin my wheel with my hand. There is no concern about this spinning. One, we're not turning it fast enough and two, there's clay there anyway. There's nothing gonna, nothing gonna spin on you. Okay, let's, um, oh putting water all over my phone. Sorry about that, guys. But I have to make sure my phone is getting wet. Okay. So I'm going to take these leftover pieces of clay and I'm going to squeeze them up and I'm going to put them in my um, extruder to make a foot on this. And I have extra pieces here, but I don't think I'm going to need them. So I'm just going to take this excess and I'm going to squeeze it into the size that will fit in my extruder. I like to kind of bang it down on my table, squeeze the air out of that, scare my dogs. They all just ran out of the room. You'd think they'd be used to that by now. So this is going to fit in my extruder. So let me go grab that for you. Actually, before I do that, I don't know what I was thinking. Let's take this off of there. Come in with my needle tool and press in and just go right around that lip template. Gives you a perfect edge every time. It's not lopsided. It's not, I can't ever just lay my forms on my clay or press it into foam and have it not be 
cattywampus. So I come around these edges with my sponge. And look at that beautiful edge. All right, now I will go get my extruder. Okay, so I went and got my die. I have three sizes and I got the middle size this time. Oh, Sharon, where did you put it? Hold on. Okay, we've got all the parts and pieces. Let's keep this up out of my way for a moment. Got my battery powered extruder. Last time I used it, I ran it out. So I'm gonna push the little reverse button. That will allow me to pull the handle back. And then I wanna push that button back. Now, I always wanna spray inside there so my clay will slide. I squeezed it into a size that would fit, almost. Not quite. Okay, it only needed a skosh more. There we go. And now I'm gonna put my little braided die on here. Put my lid on. And now I'm gonna squeeze until this starts to come out. I got my finger on here, I'll fill that clay. There it is. See that clay right there? Then what I do is I like to set it on my table so that I can feel it coming. Make sure I didn't shut you off here real quick. Oops. Nope, I did not. All right. Move that over to this side. Ooh, that way I have more space. And now I'm gonna squeeze and it, it's gotta squish it all down because it was skinny, should come, there we go. And I just need enough to go around that bottom, which I'm sure that's plenty. Cut that off. I always put plastic over the top of my die to keep it from drying out and I'll do that in just a second. This one is the, the middle size and man, that's on the big side. Maybe I grabbed the wrong one. I thought I grabbed the middle size. Looks like I grabbed the large, but that's okay. Take my sponge and just lightly go across it because you get some of this stuff in here if you didn't have your clay wedged up really good and this clay is terrible. But I make do. So I'm going to rub my fingers across this. And this is just due to my clay body that I'm using. But I want that all out. Okay. I do want to braid it. Make sure I got it all good. I do want to braid it. And how I braid it is simply roll my hands in opposite directions. I wanted that wet. Just roll it in opposite directions or roll on one side, come down and continue to roll until you get the size of the braid you want. This clay is like playing cracky with me. Just like that. Now again, due to my clay, I'm going to wipe this just to make sure it doesn't fall apart on me. This needs a little bigger, a little more turn. Just like that. Now, what I do like to do, once I get these little cracks out, is I like to take it and smack it down like that so that it is flat on the bottom. This is plenty. 
Now I'm going to flip it over and see how it's flat on the bottom. So I'll take my serrated red, rib, dip that in the water a little bit, and I'm just going to, you see how wet this clay <clears throat> is. I could probably get away with out doing it at all. And there's that. Now let me bring this back in the picture. Move my foot over. Bring this back over. And I'm going to wet it and simply go right around this edge. Now I could make it go into an octagon shape. But I think for this one, it's just as easy that I just go in a circle. So, let me do that. And then I'm going to wet it. I'm just using water because my clay is so wet anyway. This is the wettest clay out of the bag. And then I'm going to come down here and wet this. You can't see it. There it is. I'm just going to come down here and wet this. Now this is way, way more than I need. So I'm gonna come up here, bring this around. Bring this around right on my, I might have enough for a smaller one, so I'm trying to be real careful with it. Um, I'm gonna take my knife and just kind of go slightly at an angle there. I'm gonna save that piece. I think I can use that on my little form and pull that piece out. Now I'm gonna show you, if you take this and are very gentle with it and score both of these, add a little bit of water on both sides. Where's my towel? I dry my hands. And if I bring this and put it in here, you see how those lines, those line right up, and if you just rub it, press it in, and just kind of rub it right over those lines, you won't even see where this was connected. Now I'll be going over it a little more than I just did, but you just, people will say, how did you get that braid around there? And look at that, just beautiful. Okay, now I'm gonna take my sponge, I'm gonna wring it out as best as I can so there's no water left in it. And I'm just gonna lightly go around this and get some of these little nicks and necks and everything else right out of this. So that it's nice and pretty. Again, I'm dealing with a difficult clay. You may not have this problem. And then I'm going to take my same craft brush and bring this around. And I can see under here that I'm getting this to connect. There's a little cut right there. Okay, the other thing I want to do is I want to take, oh, let's see, what do I have here? Um, I'll take this. I'm going to take this template and just lightly press. A, I know it's connected. I know it's flat. And it kind of gives that bottom just a tiny bit of flatness. So it will set straight. And even that, put those little bitty baby cracks in this clay. Again, that's just this clay body I'm using, which is a pain until they get be mixed in, but that's okay. All right, now I'm going to go around the outside of this. Make sure all that excess water and slip is out of there. 
and make sure it's good and connected. And look at that for a gorgeous foot. You know, with that leftovers, with this leftover, other than I scored it, wouldn't that make either A, a gorgeous top, a rim, handles, whatever. So we'll play with that more as I move along with these forms. But for today, that's all we are gonna do until it's time to flip this baby. I see a little bit more water and slip in there. Make sure you get that out of there. You don't wanna cause your foot to crack off. There you go. We'll be back when it's ready to flip. Okay, I see some questions in here. Uh, what clay is it? Okay, so I typically use B mix or um, speckled buff or um, D3, which is all lagunas, a dark clay, a speckled clay, and of course B mix. Well, my clay supplier has been out of B mix, so. The hand. So my clay supplier has been out of B mix and they make um, what's called T mix, which is like the equivalent of B mix, only it's super, super wet and it does tend to get little surface cracks. Um, so it's a little more persnickety to work with than B mix, but firing, shrinkage, everything else is the same as B mix. And so that's the clay body that I'm using. The dye, I think I, I answered that. Um, so Hoppy told us, <laughs> so Hoppy, Sharon Hoppy told us. <laughs> um, yes, that uh, Nick Struder is awesome. And let's see, I think that's it. Hey, Mary. Hi, Kathleen. I haven't seen some of you guys in a while. I love it. Hey, Chris and Susan, Edie, Sandy, Z Zahana. I hope I didn't butcher that. Hey, Cookie and Flynn and Christy and Bradley. Oh my gosh, we have lots of different people on tonight. Okay, so let's... Okay, I am going to flip this over. I'm just using a template as I always do. Sandwich that over, so simple. Let's see if this, oh, that's going to come right out. Uh, my peg stayed in there, but that's okay. Let's go around the edge. Look at these perfect little edges. I just love these lip templates make a perfect edge and you don't have to worry about centering them or getting them cockeyed. I'm the queen of cockeyed without these. So, um, my peg is stuck in there. That's okay, I'm gonna use my holes. But I can tell you this is still a little wet. So I'm just lightly lifting and lightly pulling out. I would really wait another several hours, but I have to film this and I don't have time. So you can see I'm just barely, barely, and it's ready now. It's gonna come right out. And oh my gosh, is that not amazing? Look at that. This is the A in our, um, in our choice. Perfect rim. Look at that. I am not, I am not putting creases in the sides, in the bottom or anything, but you can see that it's an octagon. Can you see that in there? But it isn't creasing my texture by the way that we design 
and create air forms. This is phenomenal. Okay, so you flower painters, this is the balm. The balm. Let me pull this in. Oh my gosh. The balm. Okay, so remember, A, with these new forms, this is still wet, but I'm going to look how deep those are. Can you see that with my hands? Those are very deep. You see the octagon. You don't get a single crease. Up and down, around, in the bottom. And remember, this one is A. This is the busy one. So I labeled them on the website, busy and scattered. This one is busy. The other one is scattered. And this one is whimsy upside down. This one is the whimsy cone, cone tile or something. I don't remember. Um, but, uh, and I will tell you, I'm, I'm going to do something just really quickly. Um, Mr. Wilson just walked in and he doesn't know I did it. Um, but I did. I was going to show you this great big one. Okay, here's... What size is this? This is just a 12. And look how big this is. But it's got the rounded. It's got the rounded. Of course, our signature. But think about this. Oh, and what I was going to tell you, I did. I had it behind me on this stool and went to flip it over. And this sucker's heavy. And it, I dropped it right off onto the floor. It did not chip, crack, peel do anything it didn't damage it whatsoever but i wanted to don't dropping them. i don't recommend dropping them but what i want to show you is if can you imagine this this great big size like this made into the dish like we did tonight and then take your baby <laughs> these little babies are the bomb they, they, um, the clay drapes over them so well and they come out so cute. I actually did one the other day. Where's that little flower template? I think it's right up there. The Octomotion. Yeah, the little Octomotion template. I, I put this with the little Octomotion template. You don't see it? I just had it because I was going to show it. Right? Is it down there? No? Oh, well. I had the Octomotion template. And when it came off, it just looked like a beautiful little flower. Um, but I dropped it. So I got to make another one because it was adorable. But if you put that in the middle of that for chip and dip or even in a corner, in a corner, they're, these things are so versatile, and I'm not showing you the one we're working on right now. You guys are going to flip out. Huh? You want me to show it? It's over there on that chair, on that stool. Are you sure? Okay. Um, the small one, Deb, is um, five inches across, so it's kind of little, but it would make a good darn idea, Deb. It would make a gorgeous mug, um, a gorgeous, gorgeous mug. Yes, it would. I have it. Well, have you, grab me the, the three, five on the bottom right there. Hurry. So this is the five inch. Um, dual straight and this is the 22 and a half um, I think this one he made was just slightly smaller what you would get is the five inch um, but see the difference just the slight difference um, and it makes a huge huge difference in the making of them um, okay so this is count them one two three four deep round 
a perfect ramen bowl, soup bowl, cereal bowl, ice cream bowl. Look at that. I haven't even used it yet. Haven't even tried it. I've been too busy. Uh, haven't even tried to use it yet. But um, I have lots of different plans for this, but I have to, I have to try it first. Um, so, and he thinks he can go five deep, which will even make it rounder and taller. So gumbo bowl, yes. We're in Texas, aren't we, Renee? So you see how tall this is. So this is even gonna be a whole three quarters of an inch taller. If he goes a five deep, it'll even be taller. Just remember, the taller he goes, the heavier they are. But these little babies are sturdy, sturdy, sturdy. We use the very top of the line exterior grade material, um, which is quadruple the cost of um, MDF because this is top of the line exterior grade. That's why it doesn't mold. That's why it doesn't swell. And that's why don't recommend dropping it, but that's why you sometimes can drop it and it won't chip or it just won't chip as bad. So anyway, that's it. Be sure and put, continue putting in the chat um, I need that bass. I got a noodle nut in my, oh, I need, who said that? Rhonda Carr, you cracked me up. I need that bass. I got a noodle nut in my family. I had to really think about that. Um, but you know, I am going to take these babies and I'm going to make some mugs out of them and see how they come out. I'm excited. I will do that. All right, guys. It's a little bit early, but I've gone through everything. Please continue to put in the comments A, B, and or what you think of the whimsy tile win. Will you let us know when he does the fifth one for the rounds? I will um, because I'm going to be testing these um, next week. I have to finish up. I've got a kiln going with four pieces, four classes in the bis kiln. That should be out first thing in the morning. I'll glaze those real quick and throw them back in so that I'll have uh, four classes finished, um, completely finished here in the next few days. I need to get those up to my members. And my slab members, I may be jumping in this weekend. Um, maybe I'll jump into our group and test this baby. But I've always been partial to the octagons. And now that they're rounded corners and rounded bottom so you get no crease in your texture i'm even more in love anyway keep adding keep posting and letting me know a b and what you think of c the tile win and i will see you soon